Hello again, everyone. Hello, this is Dr. Tracy Zhang in Introduction to Biology with Wheeling Park High School online learning platform. Today, I'd like to go over the Google Science Fair website. Google has a very extensive Science Fair information, and you can see from the page that I have open here that there are a lot of links. If we scroll down, this is the first page of it. And I just love this caption, 20 ways to change the world. Some of these science projects that students have done, some of them younger than you, are really very impressive. And I think you all are definitely our hope for the world. So you can see uh, that they have little cameos of various science fair project winners. So we have a lot of students who went through and created some very amazing things. All right, we have a competition overview link at the top left. And you can see they do have prizes associated with this one. We're going to be starting our science fair project and science fair competition with the local science fair. And then you move up from there. Uh, for Google, the final finalist exhibition and judging date is September 1st of this year. So I'm hoping that we can follow that and get to see how that process works and who the final global winner is for Google Science Fair. Our target date is in May, at the end of May. We will go down to compete in the regional science fair. So they have a meet the winners. They have a section where you can see who the judges are and what their backgrounds are. Uh, they have a section where you can see the prizes, and they do have some very cool prizes. And they also have some information on partners who help to fund this. They also have information for participants and teacher resources. So I've clicked the Meet the Winners section, so we're going to wait for that to open. And I really like this because it shows you a wonderful uh, group of winners and very intelligent and interesting projects that students have done, all of which can definitely change the world. So it goes back several years and I wanted to show you a uh, science project from one of these winners. And I wanted to go back far enough so that you would have lots of recent options to take a look at. So let's see. Who should we select? What do you think you'll be interested in? How about air pollution impacts living health of asthma patients? I'm sure that there are lots of students in this room that have asthma, and you can 1. see the link goes to a video. In a year. One death every 20 seconds. People spend over 90% of their lives indoors, and the economic burden of asthma exceeds that of HIV and tuberculosis combined. This statistic doesn't even include the loss of workforce productivity, which has been scientifically proven. Air quality doesn't get nearly the attention it deserves and should be one of the top sustainability goals for the coming future as it addresses both environmental and health concerns. This prompted me to conduct an environmental cross-sectional study that focuses on the underlying relationship between these four prevalent air pollutants. Now, notice that the student gave you some background information. She gave you some information on why she selected this topic. And our global air pollution and local air pollution is very significant. We have many people in the area where we live who have very serious lung problems, and there is some concern that air pollution might be contributing to that. So 
then she has her hypothesis listed on here. So as you look through these videos, I would like for you to correlate the map of the scientific method and what you know about the various steps of the scientific method together with what you see the student present in their project. So her hypothesis is what impact do air pollutants have on lung health of asthmatic subjects? And the lung health of asthmatic patients. No model currently quantifies this relationship between... So what I want you to do is go through both of these websites, both the Science Buddy website that I went through in the previous video and this website. Look through all of the links, including selecting a Science Fair project winner for you to evaluate the scientific method on and answer some of the questions that it has for you on the assignment link. So notice that Google also has a way for you to explore and try and figure out what kinds of things you're interested in doing a science fair project on. So it has, theirs is called an idea springboard and I really like how they do this because it talks about what you love, what you're good at, and what you're interested in trying. And then it goes through on there just as the Science Buddies website starts with your interests. So that's a very good way for them to look at that and for you to find out what you might be interested in. So again, the Google site also has information for teachers and it goes through very thoroughly. It has various lesson plans and it talks about uh, some things that I think will be important in the lesson plan. I took some of the questions for our exploration from their little worksheet that they have. They have a full lesson here and you will be able to explore those as you wish. And the worksheet is also very important. Inspiration framework. So what are you interested in changing in the world? What do you think you could make a difference with? What do you like? What are you good at? What do you want to try? Do those sound familiar? That was from their little app tool that they had that I showed you a few minutes ago. Then it puts it in a research framework so you can take notes. What areas of science and engineering does your idea cover? Now remember for our projects you must do a science fair project in biology because this is a biology class. So what inventions and ideas already exist that relate to your idea? This is background information. Each time you come up with an idea or an observation, you need to question and find out, has someone already done some work on this? And you may have some knowledge gaps that you need to work on too. Then it gives you a planning framework. And this, as you can see, goes through the steps of the scientific method. Question, which is your hypothesis. Describe the question you'll be investigating and your hypothesis research. Then you want to summarize the background information and what you've researched about your topic. Then you design your experiment, conduct your experiment, and during the conducting of your experiment you will be collecting lots of data. You're going to analyze your data and all of that for Google goes in this section here. And then you're going to look at results. You're going to look at your measurement, you're going to look at the data, you're, you may want to use tables, graphs, charts, and or pictures, or all of them. And then develop a conclusion. Now for your reports, we're going to be using a variety of formats. You're going to use a lab experiment report on the, our lab journal pages that will be between you and me and that will just be to help you think about things and learn how scientists report their findings. Then you have an option for the actual assignment project to report your findings in a video. You can use a podcast or you could write an official science paper.
If you choose to write a paper, it needs to be at least two pages long, and you have to use good grammar and sentence structure as well as paragraph structure. So that's Google Science Fair site very quickly. I'd like you to explore both of these sites, Science Buddies and Google Science Fair sites, very thoroughly. Go through it, find the rubric, 